Composite beams are basically the elements which are made of two different materials or three different materials. The reason of combining different materials is to come up with more efficient section, more a, a lightweight section, or more stronger section. So there are many applications of composite beams. Uh, one is shown here. Sometimes we need to increase the strength of wood beams by adding steel plates on the top or on the bottom. This is what we call it sandwich beams. Okay. Another example is shown here. This is very typical. It's a very common composite element. This is what we call it reinforced concrete beams. So if you, be, if you are a civil engineer, you will definitely learn about this kind of structures. In this structure, steel are combined with concrete. Steel is strong in tension, and concrete is strong in compression. So by combining these two together, you are getting benefits of steel for tension, and at the same time, you are getting benefits of uh, concrete for compression. Also, there are other benefits, like concrete is protecting those rebars. So you know that steel is very prone to uh, corrosion, and concrete are protecting them. So there are benefits of combining materials together. Another example is this one. If you are an aerospace engineer, you will work with these kind of things. And these are basically a composite beams because we combine different materials to make airplanes lighter, stronger, and more efficient. And you can see that in the vehicles or many, many different applications. Okay? So today, we would like to talk about what is a composite beam and how we can solve problems related to the composite beams. Let me consider a very simple case. There is a beam made of two different materials, material number one and two. I assume that the modulus of elasticity of the second material is larger than the modulus of elasticity of the first material. This section is subjected to a moment M. We have learned before that one fact about the bending is that strains are linear. Okay, So after applying the load, after beam deforms, the plane remains plane. That means that the strain distribution in the cut section is linear. So consider that this is the strain distribution. Okay. Now let's focus on the bonding point where these two elements are connected together. Look at this point. At that point, strain of these two materials are similar to each other. So epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are equal to each other. Epsilon 1 is the strain of the bottom element at that point, and epsilon 2 is the strain of the top element at that point. OK? Now, what about the stresses? Can I say that the stress values are similar at that point? Let's see. Stress is sigma is E epsilon. OK? Epsilon is the same at that point. but Modulus of elasticity at that point is different. That says stress in the second material is larger than the stress in the first material. So even though we have the same strain, the stresses are different. In other words, that would be like this. So stress distribution is not uniform anymore. Okay. That's the difficulty that we have for solving composite beams. So when two different materials with two different modulus of elasticity are combining together, the stress distribution is not linear anymore. It's not uniform anymore. So I have to take care of that in a way to be able to determine what is the value of a stress. Let me show the stress distribution in a three-dimensional way. As you can see, the inconsistency of the stresses at the bonding point makes the calculation of a stress difficult. There is one trick that we use to resolve this issue. And the trick that we use is simply increasing or decreasing the width of one element to convert that into equivalent section which is made from just one material. All right? Let me show it here. We get this beam. This beam is made of two different materials. Again, I assume the top part 
has higher modulus of elasticity compared to the bottom one. We know that the stress distribution is not uniform. We want to make that uniform, okay? To make that uniform, we transform the section into a section which is made from just one material. How we do that transformation? We increased the width of that section and we replaced that with the same material as the bottom section, but with higher width. Note that we do not change the height of the section. In that case, stress is distributed on the larger area and decreases and it will be equal to the stresses on the bottom section at the bonding point. This is the trick that we use here. This is what we call it the transformed section. Okay? How much should I increase or decrease the width of the section? It depends on the ratio between the modulus of elasticity of these two materials. So we define a factor which we call it n factor. An n factor is actually the ratio between these two materials. All right? And then based on that n, I will multiply the initial width of the section by that n factor to get the transformed width. You may ask a question here, and that is, we transformed the top material, section number two, to the bottom material by increasing the width of that. Is there opposite way to that? Can we transform the bottom material to the top material and transform that into a section which is all made from material number two? Yes, that's possible. In that case, the n factor reverse. We use the reverse n factor. So that would be modulus of elasticity E1 divided by E2. And that would be smaller than 1. That means that in this case, I need to reduce the width of the section. Let me show it here. So the new section looks like this. This is the original shape number 2, and this is the reduced shape. So this section is made of material number 2. Okay? Let's do the calculation and see how we can calculate the properties of transform section. Then I will talk about how we can calculate the stresses in the transform section. Okay? Um, this is the problem that I want you to practice first, then I will present the solution of that. So look at this. Two materials are connected together, each have the height of half inch and the thickness of one and half inch. The top material is steel with the modulus of elasticity of 31,200 KSI, and the bottom material is, the, is aluminum with the modulus of elasticity of 7,000 KSI. I'm asking you to once transform this into a section which is fully made of aluminum. What does it mean? We need to increase the width of that and replace that. That would be like a T-shaped section with increased width. Determine centroid of the section for that section. All right? Second, convert it into a shape which is fully made of steel. What does it mean? It means that we need to decrease the width of the aluminum part. And then again, determine the centroid of the section for that part. We can determine moment of inertia, but it takes time, so I'm just asking you to do these two parts. Okay, go ahead, do that, and I will collect the answers quickly. 